Welcome to the Inspiring Coaches Show, the podcast devoted to inspiring coaches to bring their professional dreams to life by revealing the knowledge, insights, and best practices of other inspiring coaches. I'm your host, Jen Anderson, PCC, early settler of the coaching industry, lover of all things coaching, and what coaching is doing to make the world a better place. Well, hello out there. Thank you so much for joining us for the Inspiring Coaches Show. And as you know by now, we start each episode with a celebration from a real world coach out there, someone just like you. And our celebration this week comes from life coach, Alexa Jordan. And Alexa says, I received a really touching testimonial from a client recently after leading them through a self-discovery process. And here's an excerpt from that um, testimonial she received. Alexa asks powerful yet simple questions that lead to deep self-inquiry. She's looking to get to the crux of who you are and what you want from this life. Focusing on both minute practices, changes, and big picture ideas, Alexa helped me see how what I didn't realize, help me see how what I didn't realize I wanted dances with the present moment. These sessions were practical yet imaginative. So yay, Alexa. It's always gratifying to know the power of the work that we're doing in the world as coaches. And I do apologize for goofing that up a little bit, but that... My guest and I were just talking about how coaches, if we try to be perfect, sometimes we miss the opportunity to be real. So I just was a magnificent demonstration of that, messing up and keep going. Um, So I want to invite each of you, dear listeners, to think about sending in a celebration from your own work as a coach in the world. Just two or three quick sentences, something that you're celebrating of course, you have to keep confidentiality in mind um, with your clients, but um, I'll share a few of those, one or two of them with each episode. And I I appreciate it if you'd send it in. So you can send that to jennifer at coachingoutofthebox.com. Well, today our guest coach is B. Trost, who is an associate certified coach. She's a graduate of the International Coaching Group Training Program and is a certified diversity coach and a certified grief coach. B has been a coach since 2016, mainly coaching in the workspace and gradually shifting into private life coaching. B has branded herself under the name My Coaching Collective, and her sessions are called Cookies and Tea. So we're going to ask her about that in just a minute. Uh, today, B is ready to chat with me about her work in the world as a grief coach. And to get you centered on our topic, B has provided us with a quote, grief is a learning curve. All right, well, while you're pondering that bit of wisdom, we'll take a quick break to hear from our inspiring sponsor, and then we'll be right back with B Trost. Welcome back. And as a quick reminder, today we're talking about how our guest, B. Trost, is applying her coaching skills to clients who are navigating the process of loss. Hi, B. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, I'm thrilled because I, when we first met, uh, which is not too terribly long ago, I was so inspired by your commitment and your passion around the work you're doing. So I've got a bunch of questions, but I want to start with the name of your sessions, Cookies and Tea. You said that's a cute story. Where did that come from? 
it it is a cute story. So I never I never um, thought about coaching um, private persons, and uh, it just so happened that friends of mine thought that I was a great confidant. And what happened is, since I had an, always had an open door policy, people, friends would just drop in, sit on the couch, and you know shed whatever weight was on their shoulders. And just to create a cozy atmosphere, um, I serve tea or coffee and, and nibbles, mostly cookies. And that became a thing. So it listening to friends became coaching and, you know, drop-ins became scheduled meetings. And these cookies and tea were kind of the intro for people to really sit down relax and then start talking and it was branded by coaches as the cookies and tea sessions and I just kept it with me because it's it's a very cute backstory and um, I like I like the fact that my coaches came up with the name hmm. wow that, I mean, that's it's absolutely beautiful and there's so much about you that that's the word that I would use um, is, is beautiful and so I'm going to dive into that a little bit more so our our listeners can understand why that's my impression of you. <laughs> okay. Right. So, so thank you for joining me today to talk about your unique niche, which is providing grief coaching. So I'm curious, B, how did you come to position yourself in this niche? Well, my journey with grief is twofold, really. Um, first, I am no stranger to grief. I lost my children in 2015 and my partner died just shortly after that, very unexpectedly. And I was lucky enough to live in China at that time. So to be, to be living in a culture that would um, have a very different approach to grief and to loss. And um, I was greatly supported by the friends I had there, by especially my Chinese friends and my Chinese colleagues. And um, well, I had at some point learned to, to move on and, and create a new life. Um, when things were finally going really, really well, COVID hit. And it became clear at some point that I had to move back to Europe. And um, upon arriving here, I also knew I needed help. And I couldn't find the help that I really desperately needed. And um, rather on the contrary, because if you know European systems, especially the German system, um, they're not especially friendly, especially when you're coming in from the outside. And um, even, or maybe especially when you are native, as I am a German native, and um, I try to rebel long enough <laughs> against a new me here mm. in Europe and probably a lot due to the training I had done with the ICG and um, a lot of coaching that I received myself I, I finally thought that okay Bea, you need help help isn't coming so what are you going to do with it create your own mm. And not just for me, because the second thing that I, I got aware on on this journey is um, while I what I observed trying to make sense of my new world is that I wasn't alone. Um, it was post COVID. It was the early days of the the war in Ukraine. It was um, the at times utterly disrespectful mass layoffs, first in the US and then in Europe, and the identities that people had built around themselves, around their couples, around their families, their sense of security, equity and equality. Um, there were so many lives first changed by an existence of something and then by the absence of it. And um, such an identity altering type of loss will force us to learn new habits. It will force us to transform and 
to be able to predict the world that we're living in now, but we have to learn how to restore a meaning for life, all the while that we are utterly exhausted, that we are very disoriented and, and, and hurting. So the common denominator I found in both my journey and, and, and the people I had sitting in front of me, most of my coaches, is we often didn't know what we were dealing with because we didn't identify what we were dealing with as grief. Mm -hmm. So much that you said, and that makes such perfect sense around that, the sense of loss. And I was also struck as we were <clears throat> prepping for the show was that sense of, of, you know, that distinction between loss and grief um, and, and kind of the, the, what it really means. So one of the things that really struck me was your quote that you mm -hmm. shared, which is that grief is a learning curve. What does that really mean, B? So grief is experience in the face of loss. So this is where the loss and the grief finally come together. Um, especially if it's a loss that has formed or is forming your identity. Um, so the big question is, really is like, what are we learning? And um, maybe we can think of adaptation as possibility. Um, so I might just go into a little bit of, of definition here. So um, grief is most commonly known as a reaction to, to a death of a loved one. Um, but it doesn't need to be solely caused by these events. Um, it, for example, a few examples that I have is um, absent grief, which is something I see very often as people that are soldiering through a certain loss and the absence of something. Um, and they soldier through their distress and eventually burn out. So this absent grief, you know, is you know, when we don't recognize it, that we should be grieving. And it's, it's making you sick along the way. Um, another big one um, that I come across quite regularly is anticip anticipated grief or anticipatory grief. Um, it's when you know that something will end. This could be a diagnosis, um, an illness, but it can also be a divorce. Um, job loss it mm -hmm. can be your kids moving out right it can be me growing old and not being not being able to do my most favorite sports any longer because my knees hurt right so that's that's another that's another one and one that I am also especially familiar with is disenfranchised grief and that's when you're denied um the socio-cultural permission to grieve. And if you look at it from my perspective, coming back from China, um, finding the German system just really awful. Mm. <laughs> but being punished for allegedly ranking countries. So I wasn't allowed to grieve China. And that was um, not very helpful, <laughs> to mm. say at least. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Does that does that make sense in 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 the bigger or well, the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I I think that one of the reasons why I was really excited to talk to you is I think there's just so little understanding of of loss and the role of grief, and and mm -hmm. it's certainly you know I'm in the U.S. and I know culturally speaking here there's just that sense of okay, we'll give you just this amount of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now time's up and that's it, yeah. right? And so yes. it's really interesting to be thinking about those different types of, of grief um, and, and just this sense of it mapping so beautifully into coaching B because you know coaching is not transactional. It's not, okay, here, we just solved your problem. Thanks for, for coming. See mm -hmm. you some other time when you got a problem you want solved. It is this sense of growing over time, 
right? It's a journey. It's a, a ever deepening process of self-discovery. And, and that, from what I'm understanding from what you've shared is that's, that's the grieving and uh, process and, and process of loss and moving through lends itself beautifully to coaching. Yeah. And you brought, you brought up two very um, important parts of it. First is time. Mm -hmm. um, we give people a certain amount of time. It, there is no right way to grieve and there's no right or wrong amount of time. There's a ballpark as to where you as a coach can tell that if somebody is in a, is really like, in, hasn't been moving on, hasn't been growing out of his grief, his or her grief, um, within a year or a year and a half that um, you as a coach might, might not be the right support. So this is usually when you'd say, okay, this is getting complicated and complicated grief usually means that you have to refer or you have to guide these people towards a therapist or a counselor. So that's, that's one thing where time is, mm. is indeed important. Um, but yeah, as you, as you said, like it, coaching isn't transactional. And the beauty of being a grief coach is grief isn't a pathology. Mm. It really is learning. And as somebody who understands him or herself as a coach as being the learning buddy of someone, mm. literally the person that's with you on that journey, it's the person's work in the whole process but you're there to support, you're really there to hold their space. And if I say hold the space of someone who's crying for a whole 45 minutes, that is very exhausting, but it's mm. so rewarding if after two or three sessions, the crying stops or people come in and say, I finally feel good. I feel better. Mm. I feel a sense of purpose. And then you get to work on the new purpose and this is just so incredibly rewarding because this is for me the essence of coaching mm -hmm. and, and as you said that i was kind of almost envisioning stages mm -hmm. right there so to to really well first of all i also just want to say that one of our competencies really acknowledges that we're able to sit in a space of emotion and be with someone, not be in it with them, but be beside yes. them, right? And you called it a learning buddy. And, and I think that goes to that word partnership uh -huh. within our definition of what coaching really is, it's partnering. And yeah. um, so, so I'm just so respectful, especially within life coaching of this, this that we are gonna be sitting with a lot of emotion, no matter what mm -hmm. kind of coaching we're doing within that life coaching end of yes. our, our part of our profession. Um, so I think you've really pointed out to a lot of things that can prompt us to be thinking deeper about the role of coaches. And in a, in a niche like this, I mean, it's, it's really, yeah. So that was one of the things that I wanted to pull out from you too, was that distinction. So how do you know, for example, how do you know when coaching is appropriate for a person versus counseling or therapy because there may be at some point some kind of a pathology that is mm -hmm. a part of it so what do you have to offer us around that usually if you've been coaching for a bit you will be able to tell when emotions are extremely intense mm -hmm. to the point that just the, ex the existence of these emotions is hurting your coachee and this is where you have to be vigilant because you might be out of your league mm. of really offering support you could be running in parallel of course and always but you may not be the sole supportive system for for that kind of person at that moment um, as i said time is a factor if you see that somebody hasn't been growing at all after a longer period like we're talking a year a year and a half it really is necessary to give people, give these people a little bit more support in form of uh, counseling or therapy. And there's one, one amazing change that has happened with COVID uh, into 2022, 2022, 
is that complicated grief is finally a diagnosis in the DCM. Mm. So before that, therapists weren't, weren't, weren't really able to give that diagnosis because it wasn't there. It wasn't in their catalog of diagnosis. So now mm. it is so you can actually call upon the right therapists. You can see into who's actually trained as a grief counselor, trained in, in, as a grief therapist, and they are actually now able to also um, give you the right diagnosis for what you have. Because while, and you might see that as well with your coaches, grief opens the door to a lot of mental health issues. And if these manifest, that's also a sign for you to say you okay. need different support. Like it leads into um, depression, most of the time, it isn't. There's a, there's a very there's a distinction between somebody who's depressed and somebody who's grieving. And now, since therapists are able to actually make that distinction openly and with a proper diagnosis, this is getting easier for people to be recognized mm -hmm. as not depressed but grieving. But if you see that somebody is, you know, slowly moving into full-on depression you need to have a little bit more support for these people mm -hmm. but it usually comes it boils down of your own understanding of growth and how people how fast people can work out of you know a certain situation and this is not unlike any situation, really. If you have somebody who's trying to change their jobs and they're dragging this decision for one and a half years, you will eventually end up saying, okay, something is off here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that that progress that that keeps yeah, that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't manifest and where you can, you know, say, okay, this is definitely taking too long. This is definitely taking, this is definitely too painful. This is, there's something else attached to it. So um, other than that, grief really in its learning, in, in the way how you learn with grief, in the way how you learn to, to create new purpose in your life, create a new life is really great for coaching because you can really get productive with people mm. and if the productivity doesn't manifest then yeah you have to think um and maybe also contact a therapist just you know to get an update about what you want to do or what you mm. should do mm -hmm. that makes sense i mean you brought in some key words there about what makes coaching coaching is there's this sense of progress right moving forward towards what the the coachee is really looking for in their life um, but also there, there's that sense of there's, it's productive, right? The productivity piece within that. So I know, so I know that you've got a next stretch and answer that question <laughs> that I think fits perfectly with what we just talked about. So go ahead and tell us what the next stretch is. And if you can just create that link between what we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the next the next stretch yeah learning yeah. i mean grief is a learning curve my entire life has been a learning curve especially the last uh the last couple of years last mm -hmm. few years i can only um, imagine yeah it's what has also been a learning learning curve really was me starting uh my my coaching collective and being a life coach and i got a well my practice grew really fast really quickly I didn't quite anticipate that so mm -hmm. um and I had to close knowledge gaps quite rather quickly mm -hmm. like you know it's mm -hmm. like when you all of a sudden have a lot of coaches and you just like sit there and you think like whoa <laughs> uh, I actually have like some some really dangerous half knowledge right here but um <laughs> let, 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 me, let me go back and, <laughs> and check so but there is uh, the good news is there is tons of literature there, is, there are webinars uh, mm -hmm. and training courses, and you really just have to be honest with yourself, identify what's missing uh, in your practice, practice, get, you know, make the time and spend the effort. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one thing, like how I continually grow uh, myself as a coach. But there's another thing that stood out for me um, while starting my coaching practice i have a very diverse group of coaches so i coach mm -hmm. um 
people in the States, in Canada, all over Europe, I coach in three languages. So that covers the English <laughs> part, the German part and the French part. Mm. I have people in China. And um, so something that I, re I recognized was that, you know, below the surface of, you know, what makes us different, we as human beings are funnily alike. And um, I saw despite the diversity, I, I saw patterns reoccurring um, again and again. And I thought like, this is, this must be a human thing then <laughs> if everybody has that understanding of um, this, this has to be something that's within us. And um, I got intrigued and then I thought, you know what, why don't you, why don't you um, really invest yourself into learning via and um i um enrolled full-time as a student uh, studying psychology and it's been very rewarding because it gives a lot of answers how we like about our awareness um how we perceive things uh what we, what our brain does you know <laughs> mm -hmm. when we're not when we're sleeping when we're not sleeping um and it allows um for a catalog of questions that is a lot simpler and um, a lot more productive. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a huge investment uh, of time, of money. Like it is resource sensitive, uh, definitely. <laughs> but it is, um, it is, it is, I'm like every day I, I, I start my second shift as a student I actually feel that this was a great decision and that's mm. that's a feeling that I can just celebrate mm -hmm. and this is actually a formal degree right that you're pursuing around this in psychology is that right yes it is mm -hmm. it is it is a real university I mean what's a great thing about you know being uh you know having um how to say that um, a good thing that came out of the pandemic was the ability to study mm. and to work remotely. So you do not have to actually sit in a university, although that's really funny, um, but you can do it online. So you can mm. pace yourself. Um, you can, you can learn a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on, you know, how your practice goes. Um, it's, it, it is, I've run out of excuses to not do it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and part of coaching, you know, part of our ethics and, and actually our competencies is that we continually learn that we're growing ourselves, right? Yes. So that we're, we're deepening our understanding of, of what it means to be a coach in the world, but also understanding more and more about coaching. And so mm -hmm. I've always said that, that there's a, well, I don't know if this is worldwide or not, but there's a, a joke always in the U S that I'm a psychology major. And that means I'll be working at Starbucks, you know, oh. <laughs> but coaching, I think has been the answer to what's your career path. If you're fascinated by psychology, just psychology, right? Not, not, not psychiatry or, you know, the medical model, but how does the human brain work? And, and, yes. you know, how, what are people, you know, anyway, you know what I'm talking about, I hope, <laughs> um, but here we are. And so you're backing into a coach first psychology degree second. And I think it's just great to, to give that nod to the underpinnings of, of what we do. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so B, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so if you, if you could just for, tell us really quickly, what do you find most inspiring in your work? Ah, the diversity of people. It mm -hmm. is never boring. That's something I have to say. Um, I have, maybe it's just me being lucky, but I have such a great group of coaches which are teaching me through being themselves a lot about myself as well. So I continue growing alongside them, which is really nice, but it really is, you know, in times where we see so much bad coming out of the human brain, actually sitting in a space with a person who's just absolutely beautiful. 
um, is something that keeps me going. And it's also something that inspires me to to learn more and to grow more because I want to make right by these people. I want mm. to be the best coach mm. for these beautiful minds. And um, it, it really is, it really is a love, a love relationship. Like every time I, you know, I switch on, on my, my computer and, and I know I have gonna, I'm going to have this person or that person or, you know, um, it's just, I, I'm really genuinely looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what they haven't done. I'm looking for why. <laughs> mm-hmm. Looking forward to what they have done and why, what helped them, what got in the way, you know, all these things is, yeah, it's, it's just, it never fails to amaze me. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that reminder that that's why we do this. And, you know, and I think it's the whole goal of this show is to inspire coaches, right? And so to to remember if we if we're not curious if we if we're in a space of not being able to wait to find out what's happened for them where are they now with it you know mm-hmm. we need to require well need oops anyway <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really valuable for us to consider being in that space always with our coaching so thank you for being a beautiful representation of that. <laughs> And I do think you you made me right. You made me right today. You are beautiful. And now all our listeners can see why I feel that way. Um, so how can, how can coaches find you? What's the best way to reach out to you if they want to continue this conversation with you? So I do have a website. It's mycoachingcollective.com. And there are contact forums, not just one. I think there's a total of four (laughs) pick a forum they will land in my inbox and I will respond maybe not within the next five minutes you know but um, I will definitely respond and I'm looking forward to um, anybody contacting me about you know maybe also getting into the same nature of being a grief coach because it's so important Mm -hmm. it is really so important what that we keep the conversation going around what loss is for us how we learn from loss and how we get to be more resilient and and, and, and better people through understanding and working through that grief and loss. Mm-hmm. And there's your passion right there for all us <laughs> to hear. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, B, for for being here today and helping to inspire coaches worldwide. I just love the fact three languages. I have high school French, and it's very scary. <laughs> Um, but, but I think you've definitely inspired all of us. And so we're going to take a quick break here, but if you can hang out for just a second, I I want to thank you formally. Um, and, and for everybody else, when we come back, we'll share with you how you can apply to be a guest on the inspiring coaches show.
All right. So my invitation is for you to apply to be a guest. The Inspiring Coaches Show is looking for inspiring guests. So if you're interested in joining me on the show, please send an email to jennifer at coachingoutofthebox.com and include your topic idea and a short blurb on how you think it will inspire coaches to bring their professional dreams to life. Well, as we all know, inspired coaches believe in expressing gratitude. So thank you so much to Beatrice. And it's actually B Bia. I heard you pronouncing it differently than I am. Yeah, my, my mom calls me Beata when I've done something really, really bad. Um, <laughs> Germans call me Bea, but actually I prefer B because you it's, do. Just, it's, it's shorter. <laughs> yeah, I love it for you too. I think it fits you perfect. All right. Well, thank you, B. And thank you to our sponsor, the International Coaching Group. And most of all, thank you to our dear coach listeners out there for committing yourself to constantly seeking the inspiration to bring your coaching dreams to life. Until next time, I'm Jenny Anderson, and this is the Inspiring Coaches Show. Mm -hmm.